Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to talk about the number of classes in a histogram. This is the histogram that we made in our last video, and this was from the data set for the first 20 digits of pi. And notice that what happened was that, for example, each one of these bars, I should add a little bit more, each one of these bars is called a class, so this is a class. And the next bar represents another class. And in this case, a, this class was just a single data value. For example, the first class was the data value of, not zeros, but the data value of ones. And the second class was the data class of twos. Well, the beauty of the histogram is that often we're dealing with very large data sets. Say, say we took the first 100 digits of pi. This histogram would be a lot of information and the bars might get a little bit out of control. So what we do is we say, well, what if we make, what if instead of making a class a single data value, what if we make it like two data values or three or four? Maybe you have a huge data set that goes from zero to a hundred. Well, could you imagine a hundred different classes? It might be easier to just have classes that are 10, 10 units wide, and so you'd have 10 bars on your histogram. It might be a more manageable approach to the, your data presentation. Also, you'll be surprised at how accurate the information still is, even when it's condensed in this new form. So here we go, that's what we're going to do. In this case, we're going to, uh, we're going to construct another histogram. Construct. Construct a histogram with five classes. Here we go. This is a big deal with five classes. And I'm going to use some, some more terminology and we're going to talk about it here in a bit more and how we might calculate it um, with five classes, i.e., so the width of each class is two units, two units of data. two units of data. And if you remember, remember I'm gonna sketch our dot plot over here for a second. And if you remember, we started here, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it looked like this, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, 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 two, and three, one, two. Now, what we're going to do in this case is two units. So in other words, it's going to start again, we're going to start a half a unit below our smallest value. And remember, I could have, zero would be below one, so I'd start here. I'd start, I'd start at 0 0.5. Well, you always have to, you can't just pick up half of the dots. You couldn't do that. So you have to make sure you pick up all that next class. And then, and then it's going to drop down again, always to a middle point between the data values. And then the next one would come up and it would go over and it would come back down. There's our next one. So look at this. Now we're, we have 2.5. 4.5 will be our next boundary. Then our next our next box, our next box is going to go to 6.5. Two more units. 8.5. Now this is seems kind of strange. We always keep our box widths the same. So when you come to nine, notice that you don't need to go two full units. But watch this, let's say I take this thing all the way out here, something crazy like 10, I'll even write 11 in here, I'll write 11, because when I make this next box, 
I pick up, this picks up the three, the three data values of nine, but notice there's zero data values in when I pick up the 10. In other words, zero isn't going to change our sum of our data, the number of data values at, at all. The number of data values in that box of width two is still three data values. So if it often happens that your final box might overshoot the last data set by a unit or two, that's fine, it doesn't affect anything. And so with this, we're going to continue. So now these blue numbers here, these are our new class boundaries. Class boundaries. Now this is where, this is where the idea gets more interesting. And that is, is remember what we said here we said that on the vertical axis, we said, let's make a note here, the vertical axis is frequency, frequency per unit. Well, wait a minute. Now notice that this first class has two units and it has the values of one and the values of two. So the vertical axis frequency per unit. So what we have to do, that means, but, and we also said, we also said that the, the rectangle is described by area. Right? We don't say, oh, we bought a house that was nine feet one way and then it moved right three feet and then it went 20 feet the other, and uh, left. And no, 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 you just give them what? You give them the square footage of the total, of the total shape, the total square footage. So in other words, in other words, to get the frequency, notice that this, we have the frequency per unit, this is like miles per hour, times the, times units. Oops, in this case, we're gonna have two, so, oops. Times two units in each class. Well, in the first class, we know this is gonna equal my total frequency. Because in the same way that numbers cancel, units do as well. In other words, the units would cancel and you're left with frequency. So now I have two, a frequency of two. So in other words, what needs to go right here in order for us to get two out of this? Oh, sorry. I, I missed, that was my mistake. Uh, the I shouldn't have put this two over here. Don't you? You should erase that two. In other words, notice that the frequency, the actual frequency in the first class, is four. So, and we know that the width of the rectangle is two units. So in other words, the frequency per unit in this case has to be two because two times two is four. So for the next one, so there, let's go to our next class. Our next class is going to be two units wide, but it's, and it's got one, two, it's got six values in it. So it needs to be three, three times two would give me a frequency of six. This would be for the class from 2.5 to 4.5. Oh, let's, let's do one of these harder ones. For example, the we've already calculated the next class. The next class will have um, the frequency. I'll just put these numbers here. So the first one, this will be two. This one will be three. This one has a, four, a fr total frequency of four, so it'll also only have a height per unit of two. But this next one is three. So notice that when we have from 6.5 to 
from 6.5 to 8.5, we have our frequency per unit times our width, which is two. That has to give us three. In other words, what times two is three? Or you could divide both sides by two. The answer is 1.5. So this, this is going to be 1.5. The last one is also going to have a height of 1.5. And I think now we're ready, we're ready to sketch our histogram. Here we go. So I make my, my vertical units here. Okay. okay, as we continue, so we have our vertical line, and this is frequency per unit, our vertical axis. frequency per unit and then on our oops I'm gonna to need to scoot that over I'll just do it this way and then we'll adjust it okay and, and we have our class boundaries notice our class boundaries are are um, right up here there these numbers so let's write those down just put them right onto our horizontal axis. Okay, we have class boundaries. So let's put these down. We have from 0 0.5 to 2.5, 2.5 to 4.5, 4.5 to 6.5. 6.5 into 8.5 and our last one and all the way out to 10.5 so you can see we don't need this this extra out here and that's it now now we're ready to draw this histogram so I'll do it with this um the other than the blue I like the blue okay so here we go um oh goodness gracious I got ahead of myself now notice this our frequency per unit on the vertical axis. Our first one here is this two. And then we're gonna have a three. And we have a 1.5 in there. So what we're, we're gonna need half units. So let's do that. So half units, we're gonna have 0.5, one. This is 0 0.5, one. 1 1.5, and then we'll have two. 2.5 and finally all the way up here to 3. Remember we just said all you need is enough, just enough, so that the pattern is clear. I'm going to scoot this over just a little there. That makes it a little more clear. And then let's do this whole thing so that it doesn't blend with our scratch work over there. Okay. And here we go. So our first one has a frequency per unit of two. So two is right up here. And a horizontal, we have our vertical line goes up to the twos. I'll put the two in there, makes it easier, sure. Two. And make the, put the cap on our rectangle. And then our next one has a frequency per unit of three. So our vertical bar goes up to three from 2.5 and from 4.5. And our next one is at two. Our next one is at two as well. So we got from 6.5 up to two here. Put a cap on our rectangle. And then what do we have? Uh, one, ooh, 1 1.5 is our next one. For up from 8.5, we go to the 1.5 mark. And finally, the last one, there's three, so it's going to be another 1.5 class or height for frequency per unit. There we go. That's our histogram. Now, also, just to be kind of have fun with this, oftentimes histograms are made pretty. You know, you might you might do spots. You do spots inside of one. 
Maybe if you maybe you did vertical, you could do stripes. Maybe if you're just using a pencil, you you're just working in shades of gray. I mean, you could do gray like you could shade the whole whole thing in like that. If you're good with your pencil, you can go lighter and darker. And oh, we'll, we'll finish this. Uh, here's another shade of gray. We'll do this one. Those are those are good colors. Now here's the beauty of these: the area. This is the key takeaway. It's in all. It's so important that I need to write it. The area. I'm gonna need to make some space. I'll write it right here. The area. The area of the rectangle. is the frequency of the class. Okay, that's it. That's your big takeaway. Memorize that. I think you'll be fine. So that's what happens when we make class classes that have widths of two or more. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.